Hello EDTC 650 students and Dr. Grant. My name is Rachel Newman Wadi and my case study is on Georgia Virtual School. Virtual schools are settings where the student is accessing the educational material online and the student has contact with the instructor through remote interaction. This can include some synchronous time where the instructor and the students are meeting through live video or students can also do their work asynchronously at different times at their own pace. Why would a student seek out a virtual school? There are many reasons. Some of these include health conditions that cause attendance issues. It could be the student is eligible for AP classes that are not offered in the school that they're attending. The student requires specialized learning. The student would like more individualized learning. Or the student just wants to take additional classes on their own time. There are some traditional schools that utilize virtual schools as additional education and curriculum. This allows students to take classes online in various languages, advanced placement courses, and other disciplines that may not be offered at their school. This concept is an excellent use of resources that has the potential to benefit a student in a variety of different ways. Georgia Virtual School is a school prep program created by the Georgia Department of Education's Office of Teaching and Learning. On May 4, 2005, Governor Sonny Perdue signed the Georgia Virtual School Bill into law. This created the first official state virtual school. The signing of this bill was broadcast live over the internet, and after signing, Governor Perdue answered questions from several students across the state of Georgia via the internet from a chat room. The school mission statement is, serve as a stimulus to dynamic change by providing quality digital programs to strengthen teaching and learning. The Georgia Virtual School is a school for all students who want to take courses. There are both public and private schools that utilize GAVS courses. Some students take courses from their traditional school um, and they have AP courses, electives, and SAT prep programs, etc. Classes are open to homeschooled students as well. There are over 125 courses that are available in the course catalog. Originally, GAVS was created for students in Georgia, but now GAVS will take students in other states. In the state of Georgia, the individual schools did not have the staff or the curriculum for advanced placement courses. Due to this, students who could achieve more than standard were not getting the level of education that they needed to be competitive for college applications, and this was the main motivation in starting the school. From a student's point of view, the website is colorful with a listing of course offerings and a student spotlight highlighting the accomplishments of students that take classes at GAPS. There's an online readiness survey um, the student can take this to assess their ability to handle an online class. Other tabs include mobile frequently asked questions, out-of-state students, and special ed and accommodations for students. There's also a section specifically for parents to get information at GAPS. There are three different categories for parents depending on whether they are homeschooling, if their child is attending a public or private school, or if they just want additional information. On the website, there is not a full demographic listing published, but there is a student spotlight page that shows what current GAVS students are accomplishing in their education with GAVS classes. Educator emails or contact information are not given on the website. However, if you log in as a student or a parent, you will get access to that information. Educators were contacted through social media accounts like Twitter, Facebook, and the Georgia Virtual School request to request an interview. Um, it is possible that no one responded due to the summer break, but when no one responded, I filled out a contact request stating who I was and listing my interview questions. This request was routed to Amanda Williamson, Supervisor of Instruction, who was kind enough to answer some questions for me about the school. 
Mrs. Williamson gave me a breakdown of general education students, gifted students, and special needs students, and some students who were unclassified. She also discussed the type of students that was served at GAVs. So 66% of the students are regular education students, 22% are gifted, 9% are special need, and 3% are not classified. The students served at GAVs are students with disabilities that have a 504 plan, ESL students, hospital or homebound students, alternative education students, and students with severe medical or health conditions. Georgia Virtual School has oversight from the Georgia Department of Education, as well as having its own leadership team. Jay Heap is the director of virtual learning for Georgia Virtual School. There is some additional organizational and regulatory staff, and he, they are listed right here. The tasks are broken up into different categories, such as strategic planning, instructional technology, supervisor of instruction, student support, district support, teacher quality and instructional development. And on the GAVS website, there is a picture, an overview of each of these professionals' background, and a job description for them. Another important structural component of GAVS is that each participating school provides a school facilitator that is at that location. This person is a liaison and a support member to the student as well as interacting with the GAVS team. This person reviews the student performance and helps to act as a guidance counselor to the student. The classes at Georgia Virtual School entail a variety of foreign languages, computer science, technical classes, computer design, finance, nutrition, game design, web design, fine arts, math, science, AP classes, SAT preparation, and many more. One of the major focuses of GAVS is to give students classes to help them be more competitive for their college applications. Here is the data for the last five years of advanced placement exams. These data compare the national scores, the Georgia school scores who do not use GAVs, and the schools who do use GAVs. From 2013 to 2018, every year the GAVs students did better than the national average. In all of the years except for 2016, the GAVs students did better than the Georgia schools who did not use GAVs. And in 2016, the only reason why they did not do better is both group tied at the same percentage point. According to Amanda Williamson, GAVS is able to provide access to classes and learning that the students would not be able to obtain otherwise. This statewide online program is making the education of the student in the state more diversified and rich by providing more opportunities to learn. GAVS has a high standard of achievement, which gives the student an idea of the expectations of college classes. The courses that can be accessed by the students throughout the school day or at home or even after school. So this can accommodate students who have after school activities and a variety of different scheduling issues. So students can learn a foreign language that is not accessible at their home school around classes, sports practices, and home life. The courses do come with specific plans and pacing guides to help the students stay on task and complete their projects in a timely manner. And here are some quotes specifically from Amanda Williamson that stood out in the interview. I think that online teaching doesn't just fill a gap in education for those students that aren't served by a face-to-face -face school. It can serve as a vital part of all educational environments by developing digital citizens. Online education, when approached intentionally by the instructor, can be more effective than face-to-face -face instruction or enhance it because it distills the school's experience down to an authentic experience for the student as he or she interacts in a very personal way with the curriculum. 
Online education can be the epitome of individualized education for all students if delivered and adjusted with that purpose in mind by the instructor and met with motivation, energy, and the student. Doing so asks the student to become technologically literate in a safe environment where they can explore, fail, and succeed in healthy measure and expand their own interests into topics presented. After researching Georgia Virtual School, this state platform seems like a wonderful idea for all types of students around the world. I know when I was in high school, there were only three different language classes available to choose from. Virtual schools like Georgia Virtual School allowed students who attend traditional schools, home schools, and students who have special needs um, gives them opportunities that they would not have otherwise. Virtual schools are also a good way to give students the individualized and personalized attention necessary for the student to be at their best. Here are two YouTubes that are very quick that just outline some of the positives of Georgia Virtual Schools. And here are my references.